What's up YouTube, it's your boy Motosoka.com. Today we're going to be talking about the U.S. Army's Direct Commission course. So if you think this is going to be beneficial to you, stay tuned. I promise you won't be disappointed. Let's get it. Alright, so let's get into it. Uh, I'm going to start off. You already know who I am. I already talked about my channel. But again, I'm going to talk about the Direct Commission course. Uh, basically, it's a course designed for AMED officers and like JAG and any, anyone else who gets a Direct Commission. Um, I'm going to lay out what my experience was like and then tell you about what you can expect when you attend. But here we go. So let's talk about uh, when you get there. So when you get there, you need to know that you need you need money you need somewhere to stay for at least uh however long if you come early you're gonna have to get a hotel and it's gonna have to be at your expense you're gonna have to have clothes that'll sustain you for at least three days and i think that's about it for that one um, if you're prior enlisted or prior service you will be basically helping the instructors and cadre with teaching the direct accession people, people who just came straight, clean into the military, no prior service. Um, you're gonna basically be helping them shape these other soldiers. Just know also that when you arrive to the direct commission course, you are going to get a couple of classes. It's gonna be an in process. It's gonna be very fast paced. Um, you're not, if you're a direct accession, it's gonna, you're not gonna really understand what's going on. So if you know someone that is prior service, try to lean on them for, for that guidance or that information. Also, know that you're gonna be living, your living accommodations when you get to the barracks is gonna be two to a room. Now, when we were, when I was there, they, when we graduated, there was a talk that they're going to try to go to like 30 person open area bays, like meaning 30 people are sleeping bunk bed style across from each other in a room, sharing one common shower and all that stuff. Not sure how true that is, but just know that if you if you go and that's not the case, you're just be prepared to sleep two to a room, you and a and a battle buddy or a person that's gonna be account like you're gonna be like sharing the living space two in a room two to three in a room and a shared bathroom um, it's if you're going to Fort Sill Oklahoma it's gonna be very very hot it's gonna be hot it was like upwards of 100 degrees I think when we went marching you're gonna be marching so much um, especially to know if you buy any kind of shoes or you don't wear brand new shoes wear some worn in shoes because you're going to be marching in your and whatever you have on that you show up with for at least two days you're going to be marching from one place to another and if you wear uncomfortable shoes like heels or that's all you bring or something like that your feet are going to be dying they're going to be killed they're going to be dead so bring some comfortable shoes at least for the first couple of days and then you're going to buy and purchase everything else that you need on the other days on the first night don't expect too much sleep because i think we went uh the they went to bed or we bedded down at about 10 o'clock maybe 11. so don't be too dead set on getting some sleep the first night that you're there it's going to be very like kind of chaotic the first couple of days because they're trying to get upwards of 200 people in process and all this other stuff so just like i said be flexible that's going to be a word that you're going to get well acquainted with uh, we'll talk about week one week one was like day zero to your first uh, pass you get passes for the weekend and i'll tell you about that but uh, the first week is all about in processing your intro to the army. They're going to talk about bed making on the first day. Um, that in processing, that in processing is tedious, bro. Like, expect to be there for at least 
five hours just in processing because there's so many people to go through. If you can get there earlier, that might help you. Um, but before all of that, you will need to have saved or have in your account money to sustain you. Because if you do not have money, you're going to be adding additional stressors to your life that aren't necessary. So if you are watching this video and you have months before you report to your direct commission course, please save your money. You're going to need at least, at least like five grand in the bank because especially that's most important for the direct accessions because they're coming straight into the military. They have to gain all those resources and that equipment that and clothing that the army requires of you to to make it throughout your time in the army or at least those first couple of months that you're in the army back to uh week one it's very casual like no one's really just yelling at you and stuff like that they will they will have you hurry when they need you to hurry but they're not going to be demeaning you or degrading you so don't be stressed out about that you're gonna be wearing your civilian clothes for at least three days, the first 72 hours. It's important to bring comfortable clothes. Uh, I know the packing list might say business casual, but you might need to bring one set of those, but for like the marching and stuff, then it's gonna be so hot if you go in the summertime. So bring something that's gonna be comfortable. I would advise you not to bring shorts because that's that's definitely not, you're gonna be walking in front of privates and stuff and they don't want you misrepresenting the army. I'm trying to see where I stopped off because my lights went off, but uh, also this week is your intro to physical readiness exercise or PRT, physical readiness training. Um, you're gonna be issued gear, you're gonna get like extreme amount of army classes in the form of a PowerPoint. Um, and you're gonna, they're gonna talk about your finances and stuff and getting you squared away for that. You're gonna begin your medical processing. So they're gonna draw blood and get your shots all within the first week. You're gonna do a lot of army classes. So if you have any kind of methods for staying awake, like drinking coffee and stuff, you might want to think about purchasing some coffee or coffee maker. They allow you to have it in the classroom, but you have to figure out a way to get the coffee, the coffee grounds and all the stuff to the classroom within the first week or something like that. They're gonna give you your, your shots. All your shots are gonna be given in the first week. You're gonna start what they call a fire guard, which is basically staying up between the hours of 2200 or 10 o'clock upwards to 06 every day so each platoon and there's usually about four four platoons uh, depending on the class size there's about four platoons and you all rotate doing that fire guard which is basically sitting at a desk and monitoring the cameras and cleaning up and stuff during those hours from 22 to 06 um, on day six which is your weekend, you start your pass. You have a pass to stay, but it's limited to the on post, on the, 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 the post or the, the base. You can't leave the base at all. That's going to go from, uh, our started from noon until 8 p.m. Your day seven, however, will be different. That should be your Sunday. And that pass will be from 09 to 2000, which is about 8 p.m., which is 8 p.m. Um, like I said, you're restricted to post and there's certain places on post that you can go. Be aware, it's going to be okay. Uh, that's basically week one. You're going to be in processing a lot of PowerPoints or a lot of briefings. And you're also going to get your shots, your medical, and a lot of marching. So, like I said, for the first 72 hours, bring comfortable shoes and comfortable clothes. 